Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I bet in the next two minutes I could explain to you the seven most essential techniques everybody needs in order to make their sample sound more realistic. Without you leaving home, without you parting with your hard-earned cash to buy new libraries or anything like that. Everybody's got two minutes, you've got two minutes, you really have. Are we ready? Steady. Go. Number one, use multiple articulations. Don't use a long sample played short, use a recording of somebody playing a short note. That makes a vast difference. You wouldn't take a cat and dress it up as a dog, so don't take a long sample and play it short and expect it to sound wonderful. Number two, controllers. These exciting things, little faders and wheels and things like that, they just breathe life into your music. A sample is an instrument which needs to be played, and if you don't use controllers to swell the vibrato and the volume and everything else, it'll just sound a bit like that. Number three, layering and blending. If you layer string samples in particular, they work really, really well, or percussion samples, but try not to do it with brass. Brass normally doesn't work because it sounds weird and phasey. So layer strings, layer percussion, don't layer brass. Number four, reverb and room placement. It's really important, particularly if you are using uh, lots of different libraries to get them to sound as they're in, the, they're in the same space. And the trick to this is to use a combination of convolution reverb, like spaces and altiverb and things like that, and algorithmic reverb, which are things like Valhalla and Lexicon and um, all those sort of things. How are we doing for time? Ah, better get on with it. Legato. Legato, everybody loves legato. It sounds fantastic, but don't overdo it. Not every line in every piece of music is played legato. And if you don't understand the underlying technology behind legato, it's really easy for it to sound a bit, uh. Performance samples. Performance samples are really, really good things. What I mean by that is um, glissando, crescendo, swell. If you use a recording of somebody actually doing a Wow, like that. It sounds so much better than try, spending hours trying to sort of recreate that using a, a boring sample. Oh, this is exhausting. Finally, dynamics. It's the bane of my life. Sample libraries, which however hard, you, whether you hit them with a mallet or a feather, it always sounds the same. If the dynamics are as flat and boring as Iowa or the Netherlands, I'm so sorry, Iowa and the Netherlands, then your music is gonna just die on its feet. You need to inject some dynamics and there's lots of different techniques and ways of doing that. So there you go. Those are my seven essential techniques in a rather breathless two minutes. If you want a slightly longer version of this, um, click the little link below and I'll send you a, a, a PDF and a longer 20 minute video which actually goes through and illustrates some of these things in a bit more uh, detail. And if this is the kind of thing you think is fun and useful, then click the little button and subscribe, get the notifications and share it with your friends. Share the joy. This is Guy Mitchell Moore. I've really enjoyed sharing this little two minute tip with you and I'll see you again very soon.